Hello and welcome everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a little product here that I'm pretty excited for because I have been looking into possibly doing some streaming and I wanted a device that would help me manage some of my scenes in OBS because I do use OBS for recording as well. Um, in the past I've used virtual systems on smartphones and things like that to uh, control scenes and whatnot but there's just something to be said about a physical macro pad which is what we have in this box here. So when What Geek sent this over for me to check out, I was pretty hyped up about it. And what you have here is a, I guess it's Doyo, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct, but this is a macro pad that has 16 programmable keys. It's got three knobs, which are encoders, if you will, that have buttons assigned to them as well as the rotation assignments that you can assign them. And then there's uh, an OLED on it that will indicate which layer that you're on. It's a pretty, pretty cool product. And in addition to that, it's a, it's a hot swap guy. So you can actually swap out the switches to something of your liking. Mine shipped with Pro Milky Yellows and keycaps. Uh, in addition to that, it does have per key RGB. And it comes in various colors of an aluminum top with a clear CNC acrylic bottom. So it's pretty, pretty neat. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and open this guy up and just take a look at it and then I want to show you one of the, uh, the like the most awesome thing about it is the fact that it's QMK and VIA, VIA compatible. So this is fully programmable. You do not have to use a first party software solution in order to get uh, a, a functional macro pad. So while I open this up, again, this is available at WhatGeek. The price is $79 currently. And if you use code PUNKSHU10, you can get an additional 10% off. So it comes in this little black box inside of a pretty generic normal packaging, which is fine. You know, packaging costs reduction helps reduce cost of a product. And in the box here, we don't get a whole lot, right? So usually we check out the inclusions. In this case, we get a USB-A to USB-C cable and we get a keycap and switch puller. Aside from that, there's really nothing else that comes in the box except for the macro pad itself. So let's take a look here. So as I stated before, you get 16 programmable keys, you get two smaller encoders, and then you get a large rotary encoder in addition to an OLED, which by default will indicate which layer that you're on. The cool thing is, is that this is QMK and VIA compatible. So if you want a Bongo Cat here or some other sort of graphic, you can do that. You just may need to alter the memory size by disabling things like additional layers. Like if you only need one or two layers, you can do that. And you can also disable mouse controls uh, that you can assign via, well, via, via. But anyway, uh, it's got this, mine came with the black alu top, and then it's got this top row of gray keycaps, and then the rest are kind of like a lighter gray. And then it does have the brand on the top of the case as well. We have a USB-C here, and one thing that I found pretty cool about this is you can use a 180 degree adapter. So if you want to use a mechanism to have it sit like this, those do fit on the back there and it allows you to run the cable down and back, which is pretty neat. And that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Now we do get, again, this is not stacked acrylic. This is a CNC acrylic bottom, but it is pretty solid and it looks to be a gasket mounted PCB. I'm actually not going to do any sort of a disassembly on this today. I just don't feel that it's necessary. It's a macro pad and it sounds fairly decent stock if you're just using it as a macro pad. And really what I wanted to focus on today is kind of showing you guys what you can do with the VIA software. I'm not gonna to get too detailed, but I, what I wanted to do is just kind of show you what you can do and how you can set that up to you know reprogram these buttons. 
And then of course, if you'd like to do more, there's always the VIA documentation. There is a VIA Discord, there's a QMK Discord, There, there's all kinds of places where you can get support. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing about QMK and VIA is that you can use those to do all kinds of nifty things uh, pro programmatically. But by default, these buttons are arranged and we've got a volume control. If you press here, uh, it will mute the media. So this is volume. This will control your media. So this is uh, it's going to fast forward, go to the next track, reverse track. And then if you press it, it will uh, it will actually pause the media. And then this guy here does an up and down scroll. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at that. We'll do some programming and take a look at what we can do with it. And then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about what my thoughts are on this guy. All right, the first thing that you're going to need to do is head on over to whatgeek.com and locate the Doyo KB16 macro pad listing. If you scroll down toward the bottom, you'll notice that there's a download link for VIA for Windows and Mac. For this purpose, we're gonna be using Windows. After you've downloaded this, you simply extract it into a folder and install VIA. And then what I'll show you next is how to load in the JSON file so that VIA recognizes this macro pad. All right, now we've got our VIA application open. As you can see here, I have my Tomo connected, but it does not detect the macro pad. So what we'll need to do is click on the design tab, then click on load and locate that file, the JSON file that was included in that software package. And we're gonna open that up and you'll see that it populates the matrix here. Now, when we go back to configure, if your only QMK via device is the macro pad, it will automatically show here. But in the case, if you're using a, a board that already has via functionality and is recognized, you will need to click on one of these arrows over here to switch over to that board. Now, this is where things can kind of get a bit more complex and customizable. So this is where you need to utilize resources at your disposal to either have somebody teach you or write the code for you to create the macros, or you can simply reference the materials that are available on the QMK website or the VIA website. And they also both have discords that you can access as well. So this software is pretty easy to use by default. So if you just want to simply program keys to the keys that are on the keypad itself, you just click on the key that you want to change and then click on the key that you would like for it to press. So in this case, we're changing one to A, two to B, C, D, etc. So that's where you can change that on the left-hand side for your, your 16 key, your four by four. And then the top section here, so the top row is going to be for your left knob. The left knob, these buttons in this column are the press and then this is your left turn, and then this is your right turn. So you can program these to do different things. I will say that with my experimentation that you are not able to control different LED effects or RGB effects with the turn of the knob, but the button press will function. Now what you would want to do to make this a fully functional macro pad is you can assign hotkeys to your different types of programs, and then you can come in here and you can create macros. Now again, the documentation is going to be available on the QMK site, but you can do things like multiple key presses, key press combinations, sequential key presses, and then just raw text entry key presses. And once you have created a macro, you simply go back to your key map here, click on macro, and then you can assign any of these macros to the functionality of the, the macro pad. Now that's the basic gist of it. Again, there, this it's a very advanced tool. V VIA and QMK are, are their own software suites and you, you have to learn how to program them to get the advanced functionality out of them. But if you're looking for sim simplicity, VIA interfaces with QMK in a way that allows it to, you can just simply click on this graphic user interface and assign these keys to make it as simple as possible for you. Now, if you want to change your layers to do different things, maybe the, you have each layer is a different type of application. So for in my instance, I may use this for streaming on one day and have a certain set of assignments and then video editing on another. Well, at that point, you can come through here and you can modify the individual layers. And then you can create layer toggles 
by going into the layers tab on the left here and then you can choose your different functionality and when you mouse over these it tells you what they do so you can have it simply where you hold it where you double tap it where if you tap it and it'll stay on a layer until a certain key is pressed and it'll revert to the previous layer so there's really a, a good bit of functionality here that can be assigned but that is the benefit of having a via compatible macro pad you're not having to use first party software. The only downside is like there's no built in API integration or whatever into a software that you might have, like you might see with something like an Elgato product. But you do have the full functionality of this and it can, you can take it between different pieces of hardware and you don't have to have software installed in order to use it. So that's kind of the basics of VIA and how VIA works. I encourage you to check out the VIA website as well as the QMK website for documentation and utilize that to try to create your macros and or become familiar with the software. All right, so my thoughts on this so far is, it's just kind of a generalized thought about VIA and doing macro pads. While there is a lot of functionality there, I am a bit of a novice when it comes to QMK and VIA. And I think what I would do is simply do some basic programming on these to do hotkeys and then maybe run something like auto hotkey to do more advanced functions. But uh, overall, I think this does what it needs to do. I do like, I've got the lights on here. I don't know if you can really tell, but so there are different LED modes that you can kind of toggle through. As you can see here, we have toggled over to layer four, which is where the RGB controls are by default and just kind of cycling through them. I think that's kind of neat. Um, my only gripe is that there are no downfiring LEDs so that it lights up the whole thing, but I mean, it's sufficient and I'm personally not going to use the LEDs period, but overall it's a pretty well-constructed macro pad that has uh, several knobs. So if uh, these can come in handy for things like um, volume controls on independent channels. You can use them for doing different types of like color grading and things like that, depending on what software that you're using. And those are programmable. Having three axes or three inputs rather to program on each of these is pretty nice. And I did notice that these are easily desolderable. If you want to put a smooth non notched encoder in here so you would be able to do that and what that would allow you to do is it would allow you to spin the knobs freely without hitting each of those individual bumps so but again for 80 bucks this is a pretty good pad here like it includes the switches it includes the keycaps it includes the knobs these are aluminum knobs which is pretty dope uh, aluminum top cnc acrylic bottom not stacked this is worth every bit of 80 bucks in my opinion and and I'm going to be using this pretty regularly and you may see these this pop up in streams in the future uh, if I ever get around to setting up my Twitch and or YouTube streaming uh, scenes to do that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you do you even want to use a macro pad? Do you have a benefit for a macro pad? What do you guys use your macro pads for? What kind of assignments do you use uh, to do you do on these? And if you are a streamer, you know, what do you use your macro pad to control within your uh, your different streaming setups? So, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. Thanks for stopping by for this short review of the uh, Doyo KB16. And I'll have another video coming up here shortly. So be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, y'all have a good one.